Hello everyone, it's Rich PJ, Rich Pete Liam here. We dress slightly differently for the reason we are going camping this weekend. Um, we've got myself, we've got Liam, we've got Jack Swiston, and we also have Alex Evans in the filming. Right, so, um, we've got a bit of a trek, but not too bad. We're starting off here in Gravesend at New Tavern Fault, one of the Victorian faults opposite to the fault on the other side of the Thames in Kent. And um, we're not sure that the museum or the tunnels are open to the public today, it's at the weekend and this is Friday. Although um, we are going to be able to um, just have a look around the park, which has the external features. So, um, well, we might have to see you there. Tavern Fault, they're just sort of checking it out. Um, it's sort of open as a park, you can walk up all the steps and that, which I think is really good because usually these kind of places are never open unless they're opened up publicly on the occasion. But this is always left open as a park, you can walk along the walls and that, it's quite good. You can see like, some of the big guns here, well preserved and that, it's all cleaned up nice. Um, so we're going to next be going on to Shawnmead Fault later on, which is a smaller fault similar to this, um, but it's abandoned. And then we're going on to Cliff Fault, an absolutely massive fault, which is similar to this, or Coas Fault, but it is massive and it's completely abandoned all to herself. I think the phrase such fun is relevant. Indeed it is. Such fun! Just settled down for lunch. Um, I've got some of this marsh samphire soup I made last night. Um, ironically, there's actually marsh samphires growing down there um, on the marshes, so um, we could have just got some here, but we'd have to boil it. But last night I did make some soup from them, chopped them up, black pepper, a bit of lemon, a bit olive oil, butter, boiled it up, and I used the broth that we boiled them up in as the soup, chopped them up, put them in, and it's actually quite a nice soup. Right. Right, and we've just got this uh, little travel stove out and placed some boiling water in the pot and I've just been cooking this chicken tikka and rice and I'm about to try it soon. It's one of them wayfarers ready meals. Johnny, I'll get you a knife and fork out, eh? Tell us what you think of the taste. It smells good. It smells like genuine Indian food. Basically, yeah. Nice to be a bit Fork, do you want? Or a spoon? A uh, fork, yeah. Thanks. I like taste of this. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a bit hot. The stove works better than we expected it to. If you've just come out of Gravesend, which is there, we're heading towards that is actually really nice. Good. Someone could have looks good. Someone could have literally well like there. given me this at home on a plate and I'd have thought that was a nice yeah. home cooked meal. Yeah, so I yeah. do highly recommend those way favourite meals. I'm really glad because I have So I have one in the I have one in the I shall enjoy package. this. Is it hot? It's definitely hot enough, hot. yeah. <laughs> and also that cooker. Heated up really it's quick, like in two minutes, it was boiling like yes, good in so. That's that thanks to Alan from the Bay Museum. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is well recommended. Yeah, we'll have to thank him for that. Yeah. So I think we're just going to eat some food up and then we're going to set off further.
the BT Pedro film in here and I'm just walking around these various bits leaving that are up there and uh, I'm coming around this bit it's uh, only a small fault or what people call it a small fault but of course for us it's it's just wow <laughs> See there, these bits have actually got these original sort of flat bit here, and then also these things that uh, twist. If I just cut through here, we're on the windy side now, and um, yeah, this is what it looks like. And uh, <laughs> we're all very exhausted because um, it's not easy trekking all this way with. Um, our equipment, but nevertheless it is something that we're doing and we are loving. And you see here they've got old rails which uh, we've been just putting the guns on and then we clip things up there I believe would have been attached to the gun somehow to stop it from sort of falling off when the gun was fired. Evidence that someone's been in trouble. Police do not. It would be cross, I presume, after that. Liam! There's a whole underground bit! But like I just said, Lee, there was a hole underground bit. Everyone, we're at Sean Mead's Fort now. Uh, you see here, it's very like Coal House Fort, um, which is actually over the river. You can see like the um, radar tower there. It's weltering hot, and um, I was the only one sort of brave enough to explore the tunnels. Although the tunnels. He, did, he did manage to get me down there. Not that Liam explored, he just went back out. But... Yeah. And uh, we're now off to Cliff Fort. Uh, can we hear that from here, Liam? Well, it's right in front of the quarry on the water's edge, so don't see, think I can see it, but basically that quarry marks the exact point of it. So if we just head there, it might take us an hour. Pretend I didn't hear that. Or Matt, probably max an hour, yeah. If we so pick we'll it. back to you then, and uh, going good. It's quite hot, but good. Yeah. <laughs>
from two we're in here. The ceiling that's fairly good condition, see all the bricks and that. Uh, it's uncracked so. And uh, it was half a struggle to get here. And we're now here. Um, you can see some bits here have fallen down. Some curved bits indicating pipes. Old fireplace there. Onto this room. Vent shop. Oh. And then BTPD have us found us. As you can see, the black in here is the original paint. Oh, can you shine it down here? Oh, oh. We we'll see it here, everyone. It's like an old shelter, like an Anderson one. What's over there? That corner. And over here, this looks like it would have been a shoot for something. It was obvious. I bet you're really glad to be here now, Alex. Yeah, that has a little shaft in, I think. Yeah. This is more like... Oh, what's that, Mom? But that would have been a ladder or something, wouldn't it? And then again here... Another bit full of water. It just goes on and on. It's absolutely amazing. Does that door go in here? No, it doesn't. Are you getting loads of things? What's in there? It's like one of those places where the candles were in. Yeah. Tilbury battery. Yeah. This is just got a more preserved Tilbury battery. And bigger and better. Yeah. We've got a more variety of rooms. Like, the other one was just like this sort of thing. Yeah, not quite sure. Like that, what's that one? That's the one that we were in. Yeah, I don't know. Fine. So she shows you this room's particularly interesting because we have that metal thing up there going down here which is interesting and we had that bit over there which uh, we described as like sort of Anderson shelves of it. So uh, if we know what they are. Oh, I don't know what you said. Yeah. <laughs> so I so say if we know what these are we put in the put what it is in the video but um, if there's nothing on your screen now then we don't know what it is. So Liam's getting loads of pictures. He's our camera, picture cameraman, photo cameraman. So he's taking loads. Camping's going well so far. Um, very, very hot. 
got some good pictures and good video footage. Uh, just looking around Cliff Fort at the minute. And then I'm going to try and get up in the control tower. And then I think we're heading off, walking a bit more, setting up camp for tomorrow. And we're going to look and explore at the Cliff's explosive factory. So uh, I'm now going to attempt to climb up where we jump down from this one. And we have arrived everyone. And that's where we're going to get the best view of the site and possibly spotted. Um, where? Okay, we have come up here. They see you. We need to walk up. Quick, quick, quick. Hello, so we're now in the sort of World War II observation post on Cliff Fault. Um, get a great view from here. Um, this is probably the last part of Cliff Fault we're doing, then we're going. We're going to take camp for the night then, just to chill out and have fun. So, uh, we're going to find a place to camp next, then camp. And then get up in the morning for the explosive effect. I can see the explosive So we had a good night's sleep in the tent. Um, we sort of did like marshmallows around the fire yesterday, all that and coffees and stuff. Um, <coughs> it's a good spot. It's a bit like the Australian outback, as, as we've kept saying. And you've got like the view of the Thames down there. Um, so like we're always like, you know, you know where like it's not a. What would you say? unknown location like we do have some familiar sites like the Corriton refineries and that we just cooked up some bacon and sausages have you got a large one for breffy they went really well um fried up like a good one really well fancy um, that <laughs> next we're going to be heading down on the marsh where those trees are and it's a world war one explosives or Munition factory with you sort of prior to World War One and during it. There's a lot of buildings going for miles out there to explore. And then pick up time, and then, well, back to civilization. <laughs> Everyone, it's BTP Joe here we're at the uh, Cliff Explosives Factory. Um, not really a long trek from where we've been. Um, we've had a lot worse over the past 24 hours or so. And um, yeah, we're at the Explosive Factory, which was used before and during World War One. And uh, as you can really see some of the remains um, inhabited by sheep at the minute. Uh, uh, sweltering out here, it is our last stop of the day, when it is a massive stop as well. Read even in the distance there and there you can still see remains. So it's like sort of Urbex city for us. So um, we're going to go on, take some pictures and film. <laughs> 